This is The Befuddlement Draft, written by Yellow Marshmallow and read by Lala's Podfix. Chapter 2. Malfoy was avoiding him. Normally, this would have pleased Harry. In fact, a week ago, he would have given anything for Malfoy to leave him alone. But when he wanted to talk to the git, it was infuriating. The only time Malfoy made any acknowledgement of his existence was when he was surrounded by other Slytherins. But even then, it was only a snarky look in his general direction. Harry was getting to the stage where he was considering consulting Ron on the matter, but he couldn't see that conversation ending well. So, I didn't mention this before, but Malfoy kissed me, and now I can't stop thinking about him, and I want to kiss him again, but he's avoiding me. That would end well. Hermione had convinced him to talk to Sirius about the warning. She tried to convince him to talk about the Dursleys, too, especially as he wasn't talking to either of them about the matter. But Harry refused, and for the first time, neither Ron nor Hermione pestered him until he complied. He pulled the mirror shard from the bottom of his trunk and called to Sirius, releasing a breath he didn't know he was holding when Sirius picked up his end of the mirror. Hearing Sirius fumble to grasp the mirror and trip over something, creating a loud thud. Hey, cub, is everything all right? Sirius asked breathlessly, and Harry could just about see Sirius squinting to read Harry's expression. Harry shrugged, still chuckling at Sirius. Same as usual. Umbridge is still a bitch. I mean, horrible person, he added quickly. Sirius laughed. You don't have to worry about swearing in front of me, cub, he grinned. But not too much. Your father would have my head if I let you swear too much, he said, making Harry grin. He'd miss his godfather. So, is there any particular reason you called? Or did you just miss your favorite godfather? Harry rolled his eyes. You're my only godfather, Sirius. That's irrelevant, Sirius said, waving his hand dismissively. But that's also exactly why I'm your favorite. By that logic, you're also my least favorite, Harry replied, laughing as Sirius rolled his eyes. I can't imagine you just called to insult me, he said, looking at Harry expectantly. Harry sighed and shook his head. No, I need to tell you something. Harry told Sirius everything. He told Sirius about how he snapped in potions, without mentioning exactly what he'd said. He told Sirius about Malfoy's strange behavior. He told Sirius about the kiss. And he told Sirius about Malfoy's warning. Sirius didn't interrupt Harry as he explained what happened. Therefore, once Harry started talking, he couldn't stop. It was only when Harry stopped talking that Sirius shared his thoughts. I'm not worried he knows about Creature. Sissy has visited before, he trailed off as Harry nodded. That's what I told Ron, but Harry ran his fingers through his hair. Why give you a warning about him? Sirius finished, bringing his hand up to his mouth as he began to think. Harry waited a moment before he said, I think he overheard something. That's not entirely impossible, Sirius said, leaning back in his chair. And you said you both drank some befuddlement draft? He asked, and when Harry nodded, he added, So it wasn't something he intended to tell you. It was something he wanted to. They sat in silence for a minute as Sirius gathered his thoughts. Harry began to play with the tassels at the end of his curtains. But he gave you that warning after he kissed you? Sirius asked with an amused smile, making Harry blush. He nodded, suppressing a groan as Sirius's smile widened. It was so weird, he said, watching as Sirius nodded in understanding. Because it was Malfoy, he asked, a knowing glint in his eyes. Harry's blush darkened. Partially, I mean, it's Malfoy, and I never expected to not want to strangle him when we're in the same room. But also, he paused, unsure of how to phrase his next thought. I'd never thought about kissing a guy before, and now he trailed off, hoping Sirius would understand what he was saying. It's all you can think about, Sirius suggested, and Harry let out a frustrated sigh. Yes, he exclaimed, his face grimacing as he thought about what he had just said. And it's Malfoy, bloody Malfoy, with his stupid smirk and his perfect hair, and I just... He threw himself onto his bed. Sirius was clearly suppressing a laugh. Look, I can't say I'm pleased that you have a Malfoy on your mind all the time, he said, and Harry felt his blood rush to his face. But if his warning was real, and it was a plan of Voldemort's that he heard, 
and he risked a lot to tell you anything, Sirius pointed out. But he's a pretentious prat who might have just given us valuable information, Sirius added. It is possible this was him reaching out, that he might want to change for the better, but he is in a position where he can, Sirius said, and Harry opened his mouth to deny what Sirius said, but it made sense. I guess, he muttered, it would explain a lot. Sirius sighed with a smile. You don't have to forgive him, cub, and you can be confused about the kiss because I know I would be, but you should talk to him. I've tried, Harry groaned. He's always surrounded by other Slytherins, and he's never alone, he said, remembering all the times he searched for him in the corridors and on the Marauder's map. He'll be alone at some point. See if you can get him to elaborate his warning, if he heard anything else. Sirius's eyebrows furrowed, and it looked as if he was debating telling Harry something. Have I ever told you about my brother? He asked. Harry shook his head. You've mentioned him before, but nothing else. Sirius nodded and frowned. His name was Regulus, he said, and Harry took note of the past tense. We were incredibly close as kids. You'd rarely see us apart, but, he paused, taking a breath. When I went to Hogwarts, everything changed. I was a Gryffindor and a disgrace. When Reggie went to Hogwarts, that's when I noticed he was becoming everything I disliked about my family. He was Slytherin, he was prejudiced, he was stuck up. He was a complete git, actually, Sirius chuckled. After I ran away, he became the heir to the noble and most ancient House of Black, which meant he had to uphold the traditions. Harry wondered why he was talking about this. But he didn't want to, Sirius grinned. He didn't? Harry asked, surprised. Sirius shook his head, his grin staying firmly on his face. Told me so himself in my seventh year. He cornered me in between lessons and told me everything. He pretended to be everything our parents wanted because he knew it would be bad if he didn't. Then he told me that they expected him to take the mark, he said solemnly. Harry's eyes widened. How old was he? Fourteen? Almost fifteen? Sirius replied, his sorrow turning into anger. I was pissed, obviously. But Reggie told me he'd figure it out, like he always did. Sirius's face went blank. I believed him. I thought he'd figure it out. He didn't. Sirius trailed off. But Harry knew what that meant. He became a Death Eater, Harry said, watching as Sirius rub the bridge of his nose. Harry, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't help Regulus. Sirius was staring intently at Harry. He came to me with a cry for help, and I ignored it. Harry knew what Sirius was telling him. I know you don't like Malfoy very much. From what you've told me about him... I don't either, but if he really wants a way out, if he wants to change, I'll talk to him, Harry said firmly, knowing that if Sirius were right, Harry would be condemning Malfoy if he didn't try to help. Sirius smiled softly. So, back to this kiss. Did you really enjoy it that much? Sirius teased, and Harry buried his face in his pillow. Sirius, he groaned, feeling the most embarrassed he'd ever felt. What? I'm your godfather. I'm curious. They talked for a while after that. Harry bit back his laughter when Sirius complained about being cooped up inside, but felt relieved when he heard that Remus visited often to keep him company. A few days passed, and Harry started to notice Ron's worried glances at Harry as his eyes scanned the corridors for Malfoy, not to mention he'd been studying the Marauder's map. Ron was certain that Harry was obsessing over his conversation with Malfoy to avoid confronting what he'd said in potions which Harry insisted wasn't the case. "'Are you sure you're all right, mate?' Ron asked for the third time as they sat in the corner of the common room playing Exploding Snap. "'I know you say you're fine, and you say you don't want to talk about it. "'Ron, please, I don't want to have to explain myself again,' Harry insisted with a sigh. This didn't appease Ron. "'It's just clearly something is eating you up inside,' and he took a deep breath, shifting his sitting position." You're my best mate. I'm worried. What do you want me to say, Ron? Harry snapped, glad for the loud buzz of activity in the common room. That every summer I'm starved? If I even want to glance at my homework, I have to do all the chores and the gardening? That the reason I can't sleep with the curtains closed or on the bed is because it's too similar to my cupboard? He said through his teeth. No one had noticed the outburst as George had decided it would be an excellent time to demonstrate a new product on Fred, which had the room laughing. 
Ron stared at Harry, his face twisted and his eyes wide. Harry, I... I need some air, Harry said, picking up his bags. He hadn't had a chance to put them in the boys' dormitory yet, and he didn't want to leave them there. Ron fumbled with his own bag. I'll come with you, he said. Alone, please, Harry reiterated, refusing to look at Ron. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Harry could hear the distress in Ron's voice. I'll, um, I'll be here if you, when you... With that, Harry stepped out of the portrait and into the corridor, with no idea where he would go, but he needed a break from Ron's overwhelming pity. He knew that both Ron and Hermione meant well, but if Dumbledore, who definitely knew about his treatment at the Dursleys, insisted that he returned every year, then Harry was certain there was nothing his friends would be able to do to get him away from them. When Harry knew he was alone, he took the Marauder's map out of his bag and examined it for signs of Malfoy. His eyes darted around the Slytherin common room. Malfoy wasn't there. He glanced at the kitchen in the Great Hall. He wasn't there either. It was a while before he found Malfoy, tucked away at the top of the astronomy tower. His name paced around the tower, as if he were lost in thought. Practically running to the tower, Harry made sure to keep glancing at the map to check Malfoy was still in the tower. Thankfully, when he reached the stairs to the top of the tower, Malfoy's name was still darting about the tower. As the door was unlocked, Harry burst in the tower and stood by the door so Malfoy couldn't run from him. We need to talk, Harry said, jump-scaring Malfoy, who snapped his head in Harry's direction, before his second of fear was replaced by a sneer. What could we possibly have to talk about? He taunted, raising an eyebrow as Harry frowned. Don't play dumb with me, Malfoy. I'm not in the mood, he said, glaring at Malfoy's smirk. Malfoy leaned forward towards Harry. What's got your knickers in a twist, then? Falling out with the weasel? He said, prodding at the open wound on Harry's mind. At first, he felt a swell of anger and regret. Why did he think this was a good idea? But then he remembered that this was the first time in over a week Malfoy was talking to him, and he was acting like Malfoy normally did, which made Harry want to punch the smirk off the prick's face, but it was incredibly mundane compared to all the other interactions that week. This made him smile, despite himself. Malfoy's smirk fell into a frown. What are you smiling at? He asked. Harry's smile widened into a grin and he began to laugh. (laughs) You're insulting me? Harry said once his laughter had died down, though Malfoy was looking at him as if he'd lost his grip on whatever sanity he had. (laughs) You almost have me worried, he said, trying not to laugh again. If Malfoy didn't think Harry had lost his sanity before, he did now. Potter, have you lost your mind? What are you even, did you seriously think I wouldn't corner you at some point? Harry asked, an eyebrow raised. I didn't think you'd be eager to see me, Malfoy returned, folding his arms across his chest as he sighed. Let's get it over with then, he said, looking as if he were bracing for an attack. When nothing happened, Harry saw Malfoy open one of his eyes and take a peek at Harry, who hadn't moved from his position, but had his eyebrows furrowed as he stared at Malfoy. What do you think I came here to do? Harry asked. Malfoy looked at him as if the answer were obvious. Hex me, why else? Harry's eyes widened as he tripped over his words for a response, running his hands through his hair. Hex you? Why would I? He looked at Malfoy, who shrugged before he continued. You ambushed me in a classroom I had half destroyed, kissed me, warned me about a bloody house elf, and took off without further explanation, he exclaimed. Malfoy raised an eyebrow, leaning against the desk. Your point? Harry pulled at his hair. You can't just... Ugh. He bit back a frustrated cry and forced himself to look at Malfoy, who was leaning against the wall that framed an open-air archway, an air of nonchalance surrounding him. Why? Why did you do any of it? And why did you tell me anything about Creature? Harry asked, refusing to take his eyes off Malfoy for a second. Malfoy kept his calm demeanor, only further agitating Harry, and raised an eyebrow. That's what you want to know? Why? Not how? Or whether it was a joke? He asked, staring at Harry with a similar intensity to Harry. That too, he admitted, sighing. Neither of them said anything for a moment. They just stared at each other, trying to figure out the other's motives. Until Malfoy cracked. I thought the kiss would have made my reasons quite obvious, Potter. He sniffed his face a light pink. Why would that? Harry's words were interrupted by his thoughts as he realized what Malfoy was saying. You like me? He squeaked, a blush creeping into his face. 
Malfoy rolled his eyes. Merlin's mother, you, he muttered, rubbing his temples. You're so incredibly dense, he accused, refusing to look at Harry. You're lucky you're cute, he mumbled, loud enough for Harry to hear. But I thought you hated me, Harry exclaimed, trying to wrap his head around this. Believe me, I wanted to, Malfoy said, sighing. I've learned to accept it, though, he added, looking out of the tower. What do you mean, learnt to? Harry exclaimed again. Salazar, you're so infuriating. Malfoy took a deep breath to keep his composure. It means exactly what you think it means, he scowled. Harry couldn't help himself. He laughed. Malfoy's scowl deepened. If you're going to mock me, Potter, I'd rather you leave. Sorry, sorry, I'm not mocking you. It's just, Harry grinned, I always thought you hated me, and it's pretty much the opposite. Yes, I know, I have the worst luck. Malfoy waved his hand dismissively, but Harry could have sworn he saw a smile pulling at the corner of his mouth. It was easier to have you hate me, Malfoy admitted, sitting on the edge of the tower. Harry joined him, grinning at the bemused look Malfoy gave him as he did. I didn't, and I don't hate you, Harry began, earning a raised eyebrow from Malfoy. I certainly didn't like you, but I mean, there are people who want me dead, so the blonde git who insults my glasses doesn't seem like the worst of my problems. You were more of a nuisance. Were? Harry hummed in contemplation. Well, you're still a nuisance, but I think we're in quite neutral territory at the moment, (laughs) he chuckled. Harry had never seen Malfoy show as much emotion on his face as in that moment. What does that mean? Malfoy asked, staring at the horizon, watching the birds fly in the distance. Harry shrugged. It means there's a chance, he said, joining Malfoy and staring at the horizon. They sat, watching the sunset over the hills, shivering from the cold. Harry hadn't thought that part through when he'd followed Malfoy up to the astronomy tower. The snow glistening as the light reflected from the sun, making it look like liquid gold. The edges of the black lake were frozen, and Harry could see the ripples of water as the giant squid brushed across the surface. A few students were visible, wandering around the grounds, making snowmen and throwing snowballs before the sunset. I overheard my parents talking about you, Malfoy said quietly, pulling his knees up to his chin. Harry turned his head away from the view to look at Malfoy. They're careful with their words around me, so I don't know much more than what I told you, he said, looking up at Harry. What did they say? Harry asked, concerned. Malfoy took a shaky breath and closed his eyes. I can't remember exactly, but they mentioned you and Creature and a link of some kind. That caught Harry's attention. A link? Malfoy furrowed his eyebrows. Yes, he said with a nod. Fuck, Harry muttered, scrambling to his feet and pacing the tower. Fuck, he exclaimed, causing Malfoy to flinch. Anything else? He asked, looking back at Malfoy, hoping there was more he could tell Harry. Something about a prophecy. Harry furrowed his eyebrows at Malfoy, who shrugged. I didn't exactly ask them to elaborate. I rather enjoy living, Malfoy said, rolling his eyes. I didn't ask anything, Harry defended, watching Malfoy sigh with a small smile. You were going to. I (laughs) get, Harry muttered, trying not to smile. He moved to stand opposite Malfoy and leaned against the wall. Thank you. Don't thank me yet, Potter, Malfoy replied, wincing at his own thoughts. There's not much more I can tell you, he said quietly, sounding sincere. But you didn't have to tell me anything, so thanks for the heads up. Harry said, offering a small smile to Malfoy, who looked back at Harry as if he'd just suggested they try to grow wings. You're always full of surprises, he muttered. What can I say? Harry shrugged, grinning as Malfoy rolled his eyes. There was an awkward silence that fell between the two of them as they skirted around directly talking about the kiss. The light faded from the sky and the stars began to appear, covering the grounds in a silver light. The two boys would sneak glances at each other when the other wasn't looking, looking away before either of them realized what was happening. With a timid glance at the sky, Malfoy cast a tempest. It's almost curfew, he said, standing up. You know, if you ever need to talk, Harry began, standing up to follow Malfoy down the astronomy tower. I don't think I'm that desperate, Potter, he joked, smirking. Harry rolled his eyes. Pratt, he muttered, making Malfoy chuckle. But 
I'll let you know somehow, he smiled, and Harry felt his heart skip a beat. He nodded, his words failing him for a moment. Thank you, Draco, Harry said, as they reached the door leading to the corridor. Malfoy went bright red. I, well, I I don't know. I, I hope you win, he said, stumbling over his words. Thanks, Harry smiled, trying not to laugh. I hope I win too, if I'm honest. I rather enjoy living, Harry grinned as Malfoy rolled his eyes. You're insufferable. But you like me, Harry teased. Don't remind me, Malfoy complained, rubbing the bridge of his nose. Harry placed a hand on Malfoy's shoulder. You're not that bad, Malfoy. I'm sorry I kissed you, Malfoy blurted, looking horrified with himself before he could compose himself again. It was inappropriate, and I instigated it without any consent from you, so... Draco, Harry interrupted, instantly getting Malfoy to stop talking. If I didn't like it, you would know. You liked it? Malfoy asked, his voice raising an octave and a blush creeping across his face. Harry froze, unable to respond with anything other than a nod. Anyway... I'll see you around, he said quickly, reaching to open the door. His hand stopped at the handle. Before he could talk himself out of it, he used some of his Gryffindor bravery and turned to face Malfoy. Can I kiss you? he asked, his face feeling as hot as the sun. He watched as Malfoy's face displayed every emotion Harry could think of. I mean, I wouldn't say you can't. (laughs) He chuckled nervously, and Harry raised an eyebrow at Malfoy. Fine, Potter, yes, Merlin, you're the most annoying... His sentence was interrupted by Harry, who crashed their lips together. It was short and desperate, with Harry having thought of nothing else all week, but it was soft, and Harry felt his magic rush through his body. As he pulled away, he saw Malfoy smirk and rolled his eyes instinctively. I'll see you around, Draco. I hope so, Harry.